Of the many wildflowers that originated and evolved in some different part of the world before arriving in Ireland and finding a place for themselves in the wild among the several hundred other species that make up the Irish flora. Few are as lovely and none can be as eye-catching as evening primrose, which occurs now and then here and there in uncultivated places like old quarries uh, and waste ground, where it has established itself having escaped from gardens to which it was originally introduced in the 18th century. It's a member of the willow herb family and many features of its floral architecture are quite similar uh, to that of the willow herbs, but the flowers are so big, so much bigger than they are in the willow herbs, that it's much easier very often uh, to see the details of the floral mechanism, uh, easier than it is in, in the willow herbs themselves if you don't have a hand lens. So here we are, here we are, um, you can see there are four petals, uh, primrose yellow in colour and that's just about the only thing that they have in common with true primroses. Four petals, floppy petals, uh, there are four sepals but when the flower is still in bud you can see that the four sepals are lightly sealed together and it's only when the flower opens that they actually separate. There are the eight stamens and towards the bottom of a flower that has freshly opened you can see the very distinctive cross-shaped stigma, very similar to what we observe in the willow herbs for example. And then at the very centre of the flower you can see the deep well in which abundant nectar is secreted. Same one. Evening primrose is pollinated by crepuscular and nocturnal moths and it has a vanilla-like smell which is strongest in the evening and at night when its moth pollinators are out and about. However, the flowers remain open during the day and are regularly visited by long-tongued flies and bees which feed on the pollen as well as the abundant nectar and these too are important pollinators. The length of time this bumblebee takes to drink its fill from the nectar well at the heart of the flower is an indication of how much nectar is produced. The flowers open late in the evening and they stay open for two nights and days before withering. They open rapidly, rapidly enough to see them opening on a warm still evening if you have the patience to stand watch for half an hour. The stamens mature first, shedding their pollen the first night, and since the floppy petals don't provide a good place to land for the visiting moths, they have to land on the stamens and style. At first, the four-branched stigma is held out in front of the stamens and droops somewhat, making self-pollination unlikely. When the stigma becomes receptive, the style brings it up into a more central position so that its four arms are spread wide at the opening of the flower to ensure first contact with arriving pollinators. The horizontal disposition of the anthers behind ensures maximum transfer of pollen as the insect reaches forward to access the nectar. Flowers that are adapted just for the visits of moths are usually white in colour, whereas evening primrose is bright yellow, another indication of a broader pollinator preference. As well as bumblebees of various species, Honeybees and hoverflies are regular daytime visitors. If insect visitors fail to arrive during the two brief days of its life, the four arms of the stigma will curl all the way back in such a way that they can pick up pollen, bringing about self-fertilization. There are 124 species of evening primrose and the oil of some of them is widely used in herbal medicine for treating a range of conditions as widely separated as uh, premenstrual tension and whooping cough. The scientific Latin name given to it by Linnaeus in the 18th century is Oinathera, which was the name of a related plant described in the 3rd century BC by Theophrastus, who was the first naturalist to compile a systematic list of useful plants. 
And Einatr in Greek means something like wine chaser or wine hunter, because the roots were taken with wine in much the same way we would take olives, for example, uh, because it was believed that they would counter the intoxicating effects of the wine itself.